Any more discussion? No. Nope. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, Caitlin, um, in absence of our chairman, I'll just give you a little background of kind of <clears throat> where I think we are and probably uh, the immediate things that, that we're going to be looking to you to help us with. Um, we passed a $3.4 million bond uh, in May of this year uh, for improvements on our water system that were more or less dictated to us by IDEQ. Um, we do have a bond council. It's Laura McAloon. Um, we actually used um, one engineering firm to go through the water facilities plan, which was JUB Engineering um, out of Hayden. And after that, um, we um, went out in the community under an RFQ for a new design and construction engineer. And uh, we hired Keller and Associates to do that. Um, so we're just kind of getting started on the, the design portion of that. Um, we're still dealing with uh, IDEQ loan requirements for some outstanding things. Uh, we're down, I think, to just one policy and procedure document that we're working on. But um, we're kind of unique in that um, parts of our system are on Idaho Parks and Recreation land and parts are on uh, U.S. Navy land. And IDEQ required us to have permanent easements on those portions uh, of the system uh, before we can really do anything with the loan. We've been successful in negotiating Idaho Parks and Rec permanent easement. It's down to where it's just kind of a perfunctionary um, approval at their board meeting this month. Uh, however, we have not been successful in moving our easement through with the U.S. Navy. Um, we, the only contact that we have at this point is the commander here uh, at the facility in Bayview, and he's not been successful so far in finding out a contact, a legal counsel that is working on this at the U.S. government level. And it's kind of getting, the closer it gets to us getting into the design stage, the more critical that is. So that's something we're going to need your help with. Um, the other thing, um, other than just, you know, incidental things that are going to come up through that project and with IDEQ, is we have um, a problem with our rate equity that's been going on for years and years and years. We are attempting to address that. And when we first got into what we really needed to do to enact rules and regulations to proceed with that, um, our ordinance, and we do have an ordinance for our sewer and a resolution for our water, our rules and regulations, which I know feel felt strongly we should have ordinances on both. Um, when I started getting into all of the issues that were coming up with those documents, we really felt it was much better to do a repeal and replace instead of trying to do everything that would be necessary in order to get where we need to be. Um, and that's kind of an immediate thing for us. Um, so we're going to need your help in deciding uh, um, how to proceed with that. And um, 
the other issue that raised its head when we started looking at the rules and regulations was, uh, I think it was in 2016, Jesse, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, the previous board um, repealed our bylaws. And so um, I guess we kind of need to know how you feel about bylaws. Uh, I think most of the board members are in favor of um, having bylaws again. So the combination of the uh, rules and regulations for the water and sewer and bylaws are something that we would be dealing with right away, depending on how you advise us to move forward with that. Um, Kate, uh, are you go ahead. No. Go ahead, well, Al. Caitlin, Caitlin, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I, I know Bob from uh, two other water districts, so so we work together. Um, and then I also knew Field just in the new community. He and I both do municipal work, so I've known Field for a while. Um, and um, I, I represent multiple cities uh, up here, the city of Hayden, Apple, Dalton, um, those are ones I go to meetings to regularly. Also represent Kellogg, East Hope, Clark Fork, and Worley. And I don't regularly attend those meetings uh, in regular contact with the clerk and things like that. But it's not a, you know, an, a, a weekly meeting attendance or something like that. So, so I do. I'm kind of uh, night meeting heavy. And that was one of the things I discussed with both Bob and Field. I understand you have an afternoon meeting time generally, so that's good. Um, but this is the primary primary uh, area of what I do. I represent um, municipalities and other political uh, subdivisions, water, sewer districts, um, the translator district. Um, and then I've got a couple people in the firm I'm with, like city law, represent fire districts and highway districts as well. But um, the, the primary um, piece of my practice is that general representation for governmental entities. Um, I also do do some litigation. It's not as much now that I primarily do this than I did before, but also um, do some litigation as well. And then um, my firm does iCrypt Defense. So two partners in my firm with iCrypt Defense Council. I think iCrypt is probably your insurance company. Every most entity public entities have iCrypt as their insurance council. So oh, okay. overall, just work um, really closely and really well with governmental entities throughout. Um, throughout North Idaho and um, so that's that's my primary my primary practice uh, Lake City Law is new for me I left Holly I was at Holly Troxel for four years before that started in Boise uh, my husband and I are both originally from Coeur d'Alene so relocated to Coeur d'Alene uh, when they needed an assistant or an associate attorney up here and um, and so we've been back home since since 2016 and, and that's been good um, and then I uh, made the switch over here uh, at the end of the end of June. I left. I left Holly Trox on June thirtieth and started here July one, and so I've been here since, and it's been a great, great change. Great. Um, so we just kind of mesh really well with the firm. Um, that's the large part of, of for me and for yeah. my my practice. And I, I'm simple. And Colleen, when you were talking about all the the issues, the U.S. Okay. Navy one is really. Believe it or not, I, I haven't. That's you're you're very unique in that you have your uh, lines going through not only state land but federal, right. well, military. Yeah. So, um, but I, I all of those issues and the going through bond and working with IDEQ and the loan documents, and the construction project. Um, sure. That's a lot to undertake, and I totally understand it. And um, you know, I, I think. Unless people did that for, you know, you're just trying to get improvements done for your system, they don't appreciate how much work that is to go through. Yeah, it, it's just been yeah, a real learning experience. Yeah. I've, oh, yeah. I've always found, um, now, is your loan uh, through RD, Rural Development, USDA, RD loan that you have? Or? Yeah, let me tell Jesse. I just sent her a tip. Jesse, yeah. I'm, I'm it's sorry. It's an SRF loan. Through IDEQ. Through IDEQ. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, I've always found both IDEQ and if you had rural development through USDA helpful in town. I, I yeah. found them to be helpful to work with if you have questions. 
so that's a positive. I mean, it's a, it's a big process, but I've always at least found the offices here helpful. Um, yeah, we're, we're working with Katie, and, oh, and yeah. she is really helpful. And then our engineer now is Keller and Associates, and we're working with Kyle. And so far, that, that's all been good. Oh, good. Um, let me just interject really quick. Um, Ted's trying to get on, um, Jesse, and it's hanging, saying that, uh, waiting for the host to open the meeting. Uh, okay, I don't have the notification. Let me find it. Thanks, Allie, for doing that. Yeah. There, we have Ted now okay. and Calvin. Oh, good. Okay, bye. Um, and so you're very familiar, Caitlin, with ordinances and resolutions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, nope, I, um, yeah, that's something that, you know, pretty routine. I, I, ha I do have some opinions on bylaws, so I'd happy to be getting in that here. As a, as a governmental entity, that's not required, but I agree that some form, if not called bylaws, because you're not a, um, you know, you're not a nonprofit or for-profit, you know, you're a political subject. You're not required to have articles of incorporation or bylaws. But I do understand the need to have some sort of a policy procedure that you want to have something that kind of just governs your board requirements. Yeah. Um, right. Do you have, do you have a history with other boards where they do have uh, bylaws? I um, I'm trying to think. I've had ones that have had them in the past, but I don't know that I have any active um, governmental entities. I represent a couple of water associations, which are nonprofits under the Idaho Nonprofit Act. Yeah. They're, they're not governmental entities. They're not. They're not taxed. Okay. Right. Um, and they do. I don't think I have any with another um, water or sewer district. Though I do. All of those that I have have internal have other policies, resolutions, if you will, for the board. Okay. Requirements for the board. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think we really care what we what we call the instrument. It's just that I noticed when I started getting really down in the detail in what we have, which are both very old, is without the bylaws, there, there's just a lot of stuff that is just absolutely not addressed, and somehow we need to... Right. No, the biggest... So, so one of the... Um, I think this is a remnant of the past, and this is kind of also where a lot of places acted like corporate entities, like whether you were a nonprofit or for profit. Is that one of the one of the provisions I see most frequently is, um, you know, a board member will be removed if you don't attend meetings. Well, you're all elected officials, so you right. can't remove each other. The people can remove you, or a judge can remove you. Right. There's no, you know what I mean? Like you're elected, so. Uh, so it's just kind of those things about knowing your powers and and um, the powers you have as a board, which yeah. are, are a lot. I mean, you have broad authority, right? The board can buy property, sell property. You have to follow the procurement statutes, um, you know, right. enacting other policies for your own system. You can assess fees. You can tax. Um, you know, you're a taxing district, meaning you could be on the property tax <coughs> role. Um, so you have, a, you have a pretty broad authority under... Title 42, Chapter 32 of Idaho Code. That's yeah. where your authority comes from. Yeah. And, and what I've seen of people that have repealed them, they just say we hereby repeal them. Yeah. And chap yeah, Title 42, Chapter 32 is how we operate, period. But I, at I don't... Some point, at some point, I agree that just going going through and having, uh, and having those policies and procedures just to give everybody a better guide of what's going on. I don't think that's a bad idea. Yeah. Certainly not. Okay. But I do think it's really important that policies, um, especially with re respect to your fee assessment and your connection policies, um, yeah. for those in your district, people who come to connect, you know, developers and things like that, don't know how much growth you have, have their, um, I've kind of in the mindset, as everybody is, we are just on a never-ending Mm -hmm. We're here. We've been found. You're not, I mean, I think that area up around you is is next. It's, you're in a beautiful spot, and people want to live here. And so, right. you know, Bob um, and I, the couple districts that we work on together, this has been a constant. Um, you know, we are we are seeing that with a couple of the districts is that it's more development than has ever occurred. Yeah. And kind of like, well, now what do we do? You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it wasn't a big deal for a long time, and now it is. And so just having those policies. But right. you already have, having engineers already for the system and the planning and 
and you know we know after we get through this what the facility you know can hold and what rates we should be charging that's those are huge things that will help you yeah okay good mm -hmm. so cal do you and ted have uh questions for caitlin we've been talking about a lot of things we basically went through and you know updated her on where we are with the loan and the engineer and the design and what we thought are critical leads uh, are right now for legal counsel. So if you guys want to jump in with anything, no, I'll I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, listen to what you've gone over uh, before I got on. I'm sorry I missed. It, but, uh, you didn't but, miss me. You can fill me in. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess then, uh, it, unless somebody else has something else they want to bring up, we probably should just kind of go over your engagement letter. Is that appropriate now? Yep, that's fine. I just wanted to be able to send Jesse a draft of, of what I would, you know, send out to you so you would have it for your review. Um. I guess one thing um, on the second page under uh, review and prep of documents, mm -hmm. um, do you have a, a fee schedule for the firm? And I'm thinking of paralegals, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and assistance, because I think in a lot of this stuff with the redoing our documents, um, probably a lot of it's going to be, you know, done by them. Mm -hmm. I um, I I guess I don't know. I'd have to see what what you would what you would have. Um, I do most of my own the municipal work myself. Um, we have we have paralegals here. I just find that this is not like litigation. You know, it's such a unique and weird area, and just so for knowing that. But I will say a paralegal charges a hundred an hour. So I didn't put I can edit that, but it's a hundred. Okay. So my hourly right. is one seventy, and theirs would be a hundred. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I, I guess I, it's always, and I know that, that you're used to this, is uh, we're always trying to save every dollar that we can. Oh, absolutely. And we try and to push work down and out in the firm. I'm the same way. I, I, yeah. I uh, If I can push it off and do that, I do. Okay. Yeah, no, I do. Good. Um, and, and then how do you handle uh, your rates like, I know we do want you to review uh, our agendas, uh, our minutes, and at any time that they include entering into a contract with somebody, we of course are going to want you to you know yeah. look at that. Um, and that you just do that at your regular yeah. hour thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. For minutes that I I do this though for most of everybody actually. And so if I review minutes, like here's the. Here's the draft minutes before your next meeting. I don't charge you for that. I do, okay. that. I do that for everybody. If you want to send me your draft minutes, to you know, Jesse wants to send me the draft minutes. Here's what I prepared for our, you know our meeting, our last meeting. Can you review? Make you know that that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to review those at no charge. Oh great, yeah, because I, I know Field kind of made you know some some uh, changes too on on the rate for that. So that's great. I, we appreciate that very no, much. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, it's to me, or I, I'm happy to do that and to review, you know, I was already at the meeting anyway, so it's not, not really worth, you know, okay. if I was, if I was there, not really worth, I don't feel like to fair to charge twice for that. So I, if you want to send me the draft minutes, I'm happy to review that. Same thing with an agenda. It's such a okay. quick, easy review. I'm happy to review that and add comments, uh, you know, but for other, yeah, other things I charge, and I buy, I'm sure Field was too, most attorneys are a tenth of an hour, so. In bill right. and so if you saw like point three, point four, um, yeah. on the bill, that would be why. But and then the rest of it is just at one seventy. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, let's see. Um, I don't have too many comments. I know you're used to. We have our internal procedure that um, we can't pay any bills until after our board meeting because everything is approved by the board. So. <laughs> Then that's good. That's yeah. how it should be. Yep. The that's good. 30 days might be oh, that's fine. 35. Just, it just depends on what it hits us. If we just had a meeting, then I just want to get understand that. I think my billing, I think the billing system, I put always in like the 30 days, the next 30 days. 
but you're okay. not, I mean, I'm, I'm sure eventually there would be an interest. I've never had that with a public entity client. So if it's even 60 days, you wouldn't be charged interest okay. or penalty to that. Okay. It'll say when it's due, but um, I'd have to check on that. But I don't think I have any of them hit on an interest payment for a while. It'll it'll make a flag comment to me, but it won't be a problem. Okay. All public, yeah, I totally get it. It comes with the work. All government entities, you know, are like that. It all has to be when it lines up with your board meeting and when things can get approved and not a problem. Okay. Yep. And Great. so, Caitlin, um, as far as availability, um, do you... You know, do you feel like you're pretty accessible, or do we, we can we anticipate like a 24 hour return? Um, 24 hour, yeah. Okay. On, a, on an email, on document review, and things like that. It depends on the size of the document. With, I mean, okay. agendas and minutes, I can get back to Jesse in 24 hours to go to those. Emails, probably 24 hours as well. And then larger documents, certainly within the week. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, what we like.